just one time, bitch, think All that money get flushed in the blood Try to dribble, go give me a ring You got money, you turn out the thing I was just one time, bitch, bang Let that act now, I get with the things Feel like Ezra when I'm on the scene All these felonies they never seen Got my cup like I'm Argentinian Like the second bitch, stay off my screen I'm addicted to hating on me Don't know what it takes So, what is going on, guys? I am back, finally. It's been a long, grueling, awaiting time to try to get all the parts I needed in an allotted amount of time. I finally have them. It's February 2nd, 12.57 a.m. Just got out of work. So what we're gonna do today is pull this transmission out and start prepping my new clutch and everything to go in. Um, I'll run you through like a couple of new things that I got recently that was taking so dang long uh, with the process. Like I finally got a set of seats that I want to use in this car, which are in the car, but not fully bolted in yet because I'm still waiting on the planted seat rails. And then I need to decide if I'm going to use the factory um, sliders from this car, or if I'm going to use the factory sliders from that car that they came out of to make them fit into the seat brackets that we bought. And then along with that, We've got our poly transmission mounts, new Bevo. Oh, wait, there's more. Not that bad. We've got our new chromoly lightweight flywheel. So this is going to replace our dual max flywheel that we had originally in this car. And unfortunately, this isn't the exact kit I wanted to use, but it is what it is. I had been waiting for about five months for my other clutch to get kit to come in. Um, unfortunately, the company just kept pushing me back further and further and further, and it got nowhere. And then eventually it became January, middle of January, and I said, where's my clutch? And they said, we're not going to have it. So I had to go with this whole setup. So what we did was we went with a luck kit of the 550i, the, you know, 335is clutch kit. Um, it wasn't ideal as to what I really wanted, but for this car not really making that much, I mean, it makes good power. It makes probably, if I were to guess on a hundred octane, it's making about 420 to 450 to the wheels. Um, this isn't dynoed or anything like that. But based on all my estimations and what people have on stock turbos and running 85 versus 100 octane and all that, um, 20 pounds of boost, they're typically, make, typically making around 450. So I'll just say it's 420 to 450 to make you guys happy because I don't have a dyno. But anyways, um, that will not be making enough power to cause this clutch to slip. So I think we'll be fine. It, like I said, it's not ideal. It's not what I wanted, but for the amount of time I have left to prep before racing season starts. And now it's just not fathomable and I still need to finish TJ's car because we got that back from Joven welding all the piping. So I'm gonna have to make more update videos on the Forester because that's, it's been here a while. We just don't have that kind of time because we're just not here that often. We have work, we have other responsibilities outside of this place. He was aware of that. He's cool with it. Um, that's almost done. It's, it literally just needs like stupid small things left to go and we'll be ready. But anyways, Pro Molly lightweight flywheel, 18 pounds, 550i clutch kit. Uh, I bought all the new, you know, throw bearing and all that. I bought a new, um, the braided clutch line. I don't know why I bought it. I didn't even realize that these ones were pretty good from factory, so that's a shame on me. But bought that, bought the brass little uh, pivot, pivot bearing. And then on top of that, I bought the stainless braided rear brake lines because those need to be done because I already did the fronts, but I haven't done the rears. They weren't in stock till now, so I finally got them. Still haven't changed the oil since the last time we raced it. And then Saturday, Allie and I are going down to Long Island and we're gonna get another set of these exact same wheels, the Apex ARC 8s. Um, the other ones are gonna be 18 by nine and 18 by nine and a half. But I needed a set of wet tires for the track just in case it's raining. And those have Michelin Pilot Sport. I think they're fours or something like that. I don't know the exact tire spec, but those are 245 in the front and 275 in the rear, just like I'm running now. Well, except these are 255s in front, but vice versa, it'll be perfect for what I need to use it for. And they're 18, so I 
won't really have any problems clearing the Brembo's now. Um, these wheels can clear them, luckily, but most of the other wheels that I've tried that are 17s actually don't clear the calipers for whatever reason. I don't know if it's because the wheel weights or what, but they normally get stuck on the wheel weights, so obviously it's wheel weights, but anywho. So, with all that being said, we're gonna pull the transmission out tonight, hopefully within like a couple hours. I don't know, I've never pulled one of these out before, but from what I've seen, it really doesn't look that bad, minus the fact that I don't have an E18 socket, so I'm gonna have to figure that one out. But, I should be a rapper, that's how fast I'm talking. Anyways, so, in the meantime, with all the stuff that's been going on, I bought an eBay front lip, it doesn't fit perfectly, but it's gonna do us justice. I gotta trim there and trim the other side. It, it's just a little bit long. And then we have our Recaro Evo 10 seats. Um, that's what I'm gonna be running in here. This one, you guys can hate me if you want. This is the, actually the driver's side seat, and that one's the passenger side seat. But I'm only doing this because the bolster on this side was a little bit messed up. And I don't want to repair the seats just yet. I just want to make sure that they're comfortable, comfortable to drive in. So the passenger side is perfect, in perfect condition. The airbags are great. I got these for a great deal. Thank you. I forgot your name. Don't be mad at me. But I got them for a great deal. So we're going to make them work in here. That's actually the driver's side. But the thing is, there's plenty of uh, room in here to get your hand in to actually adjust the seats, though. So I really don't think it would be that big of a deal. Okay, so little update. All I've got left to do now is pull the e-torx uh, transmission bolts out. Everything else is already done and out of the way. Um, as you can probably not see very well, because I can't even see very well out here. We've got everything disconnected. Holy smokes, camera angles, yay. But everything, everything's completely disconnected. We'll left the exhaust here because the drive shaft should be a little clearer there. Yeah, I'm just flipping you guys around upside down, seven ways to everywhere. But anyways, so yeah, um, it's going to be a pain in the neck to get all the bolts up there. Those blue ones right there, those are the E18s that I got to get off. So these are going to be a great time. Um, if you're asking me if anything's holding up the trans, well, currently the engine mounts are. So, some pretty good engine mounts. I didn't replace them. The previous guy must have. So, kudos to him for making it a little bit harder for me because, well, he replaced them. But, looks like we got a little bit of a leak right here. It's either going to be the rear main or the input shaft on the trans. So, I'm glad I did this now as long as I can get these off because then I can plan ahead to buy all the seals tomorrow from SCP. So I gotta search around the shop, try to find an E18 because I need an E18 to get those sockets, those bolts out. Um, once I get those out, I'm just gonna pull the trans out by hand. Uh, I should probably use a jack to support it, so I gotta grab a jack too. It might get in the way, so I might just bench press this by hand to be honest with you. Um, these transmissions weigh like 150, 160 pounds. It'll be pretty heavy, but there's no clutch attached to it, so I'm going to hope for the best and aim for the worst, you know? Maybe I'll get stuck underneath her. Actually, I'm going to use a jack now. Anywho, um, so yeah, i got to find an E18 so I can get those bolts out, and once I get those out, I'll touch base with you guys when I have the whole transmission out so that way we can all go look at how bad the clutch really was because I guarantee you this thing's hot-spotted to hell because I've beat the crap out of this car for a while, so stay tuned. Okay, so it's 4 a.m. now. Started this at 12.57, right? So we got three hours total to pull it out. It's my first time pulling this clutch out. Um, honestly, it was going super smooth until that very last bolt all the way at the top. It's like an E14. Um, that one honestly probably took me an hour and a half. It was just one of those things where you got to be like patient enough to go back and forth and kind of figure out I mean, I'm here by myself, too. I don't have a lift, um, just because our, our flows won't really support that. But anyways, so it was just a pain in the neck to get this one bolt. This one bolt. It's all the way at the top. All the way at the top on the passenger side. That's the one I could not really fully get to. Um, I tried to line it up 
from behind the intake manifold come up and then like towards, you know, the bolt itself. And evidently, um, all I ended up doing was just having a bunch of extensions all the way from the back side of the transmission. And I kind of just felt around up there with the tip of the, the tip of the e-socket, honestly. And then I got lucky, finally got it in the spot. And then just like that, it was good. Um, so we got the dual mass off. Hey, obviously it doesn't look horrible, but I mean, it's definitely been burnt up. Um, same thing over here. The clutch really didn't look, doesn't look that bad. I mean, I'm used to Subaru ones. So like normally when you get down to the rivets, like that's when you have a bad clutch, but maybe it's not the same for these BMWs. I don't know. Um, it's kind of new to me with these ones, but because it seems like it has plenty of, plenty of surface material left. And you can kind of still see the grooves, but like not over there. It's not even really that hot spot. I mean, it definitely is some in some places, but not as bad as I thought for what it was flipping. But transmission now is another story. This thing's got a crap ton of grease on the inside of here. Horrible lighting, I know. Um, but it looks like the rear main seal is leaking. So I'm glad I did this now. And on Thursday night rather than doing it on a Friday so we then I can kind of get back at this next week with a new um, you know crank seal main seal rear main seal there we go I'm tired guys um, rear main seal so I could do that in one shot and I was kind of debating on doing like the two seals on the inside of the transmission just while I'm here so I have everything just squared away but honestly they're not leaking now, so I'd much rather just not touch them and just let them be. Um, I'm going to do a fluid flush on this anyways. And then I'm also glad I noticed because this is where I'm getting some shifter play from. So I can replace this while I'm here, while it's off the car. It'll be so much easier. Um, so that's great. And I can clean all this up, make it look nice and pretty. Um, and then I can also go ahead and do my couple other silly things that I got because I also bought... Oh, they're in the back of the E36, but I bought the poly bushings for the shifter. Um, and then like a, a few other things that I don't remember off the top of my head right at this very moment in time. Um, but in this box, like I said, we've got our, you know, chrome Ollie lightweight flywheel, 550i clutch kit, all the hardware, the stainless braided line, which I think has the clutch delete of, I don't know. This actually does or doesn't. It might not. I was kind of hoping I could delete it. I think I can. I don't know. Figure it out. But, so this is the end of part one. Part two will be in a couple days. Maybe on Monday. Um, if I'm feeling like hopping to this right away. I kind of got to get some of this stuff out of the way so Austin can pull his car in if he needs to. And vice versa, whatever. Um, but yeah. 